Hypothesis testing is really the heart of statistical analysis. All hypothesis tests, regardless of the context, regardless of the type of problem, really follow the same steps. So let's look at the steps of a hypothesis test. And then we'll do an example where we do a left tail hypothesis test on one proportion. The first step for every hypothesis test is to define what are the hypotheses. We'll have a no hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis, where the no hypothesis equals something, and the alternative, which we're trying to prove, is either not equal, less than, or greater than. Then we'll draw a picture to help us visualize what's going on in the problem. The third step, we will calculate a test statistic. And this is where, based on the context, it might change slightly because different contexts have different test statistics formulas. But that'll be the third step, followed by using that test statistic to calculate a p-value. And we'll usually use Excel for that p-value. Once we have that p-value, we're ready to make a decision. Remember, that decision is we can reject the null hypothesis if that p-value is smaller than the alpha, or we fail to reject that null hypothesis if that p-value is greater than the alpha value. And finally, we will end with an interpretation putting that decision in context of the situation that we are studying. These six steps are what we'll do for every single hypothesis test. So let's see if we can do an example where we see this play out. Let's say, based on a Google search, 13.1% of the United States of America are left-handed. A researcher wants to know if that rate is smaller in a community. So the researcher took a sample of 312 people. Of that group, 32 were left-handed. And we want to know what can be concluded if we decide to set alpha, the standard for rejection, at 0.10. Let's go through these six steps to set up and work through this hypothesis test. First thing we wanted to do was set up the hypothesis. Well, for our hypothesis, we need a null hypothesis. We're talking about a proportion or a percentage, so we use p. And the null hypothesis is that it equals something that was claimed. The proportion claimed was 0.131, changing that percentage into a decimal. For an alternate hypothesis, what we're trying to prove, the researcher is trying to prove the rate is smaller. So we're trying to prove the proportion is less than 0.131. Based on that alternate hypothesis that we're trying to prove that it's less than, we can draw a picture of what we're trying to find. For our picture, we'll draw our little normal distribution. The claimed assumed hypothesis is 0.131. We're trying to show that it is actually less than, so we have a left tail test. Well, to calculate whether or not that's going to happen, we first have to find the test statistic. 
And now some important formulas that we know for the test statistic, because each context has a different test statistic. If we are talking about a proportion, one proportion, the way we calculate the test statistic is we have z is equal to p hat, the sample proportion, minus p, the claimed proportion from the hypothesis, divided by the standard error, where the standard error is equal to the square root of pq over n. Again, that p and q are from the null hypothesis. So in this case, we first need to know the actual proportion. So p hat, the proportion that we're working with, we had a sample. 32 out of 312 were left-handed. That's going to give us a proportion to work with of 0. 0.1026. That value is also the edge of my picture. I can add that 1026. That's the edge of the shaded region. Need to know the standard error. The standard error is the square root of p. That p is the 0. 0.131 times q. q is 1 minus p. So if I do 1 minus 0 0.131, I get 0 0.869. Over n, the sample size we said was 312 people. And if I put that in my calculator, the value you should get is 0 0.0191, which means now we're finally ready to calculate our test statistic. Our z is p hat, the sample proportion, which was 0 0.1026 minus p, the hypothesis proportion, 0.131, divided by the standard error, which we just calculated, is 0 0.0191. And when I put that in my calculator, I get negative 1.49 as my test statistic. After finding the test statistic, then we're ready to use that test statistic to find my p-value. And the p-value we can find on Excel by just saying equals norm.s.dist. It's always a normal distribution number, standard normal. Putting in that test statistic of negative 1.49 comma true, that's going to give me my p-value of 0 0.0681. The fifth step in my process, I'll just kind of move up here to this little space I have left. The fifth step in my process is to make a decision. And for this decision, we found the p-value was 0 0.0681. The alpha, which helps us make the decision, we said alpha was 0.1 or 0.10. Since we have a smaller p-value, we've gone beyond the level of reasonable doubt. Small p-value means for our decision, we will reject the null hypothesis. That is our decision, because the area in that side that we shaded, that p-value is 0 0.0681, is smaller than the alpha. So we get to reject the null hypothesis. So what does that mean in terms of our interpretation? For the interpretation, we will always look at the alternative hypothesis. And we're going to state whether or not that alternative hypothesis has been proven true in context for what it means. So let's give it a script. Maybe in our notes above, we could really outline the script of the interpretation. For the interpretation, we're going to say there is or there is not, depending on whether or not we prove the alternative, sufficient evidence. comma, at the alpha 
equals blank level to conclude blank. And in that blank, we're always going to put the alternate hypothesis in context. So what does that look like for our problem? We can say there is, because we successfully rejected, so there is, it's positive, sufficient evidence comma at the alpha equals, alpha we said was 0.10 level, to conclude. And then we're going to use the alternate hypothesis in context, that p is less than 0.131. The proportion of the community in context that is left-handed is less than, because the alternate said less than, 0.131. And that completes our hypothesis test. We're going to do several more of these hypothesis tests in our future videos. But what I want you to notice, every hypothesis test follows the same six steps.